welcome to the Flame and Fiber podcast. My name is Barbara. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Steve S. Welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's Sunday, January 5th, 2020. And Happy New Year, everybody. It's a new year and then people are saying a new decade, although technically I think it's not a new decade till 2001. You start counting at one, not at zero. So... But that's being too technical. It's a new decade. I get it. I was just kidding. That was for Dennis. <laughs> I'm pulling a Chevy Rail. I am celebrating the new year with my with my Cosmo. I'm a little nervous to do this because the last time I had a Cosmo on my podcast, I broke my my uh, martini glass while I was at it. I didn't. Pearl broke it while I was editing my podcast. So I may be putting the life of this martini glass in jeopardy. I also have the end of my coffee, so depending on how I'm feeling. Did you like my new intro? That was my Christmas present from my daughter. Isn't she the best? She actually commissioned that song just for my podcast. So I have the licensing right to that and I can use it whenever I want. Isn't that fun? And he's It's called Flame and Fiber. Oh, and I don't remember the name of the artist, but his name and, and, and email address was at the bottom. And he and he is, uh, and I'll put it in the show notes. He is available if you have needs of a, of a um, theme song. So anyway, I'm so in love with my new, my new opening. Thank you, Christy. So that was from my daughter. She really didn't like my old one, and she hated the music I had picked. <laughs> so, anyway, it's New Year. <sighs> Notice where I am? I'm in my room. Somehow, toward the end of last year, I got the idea that maybe it was just time and I was ready. And on New Year's Day, I... um started working on my room and I took a video a before video I've actually taken a before and after video each day that I've worked and today's the first day of the year that I haven't worked in the room yet and so but I won't show you you know I, you don't need to see all the intermittent steps but I will show you the video when I first walked in the door on January 1st and said I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna put that right here so I have gift projects that I need to finish, or I want to finish, but apparently I don't want to do them now. It's January 1st, 2020, and I have an urge to work on my room. That didn't happen in 2019. I made a before video then too. <laughs> I don't think it's valid anymore. It's very possible that this before video will never see the light of day, but you never know, it might. So I'm just walking in the room. I opened the door. The dogs aren't allowed in here. You can see why. But this behind the door won't even open all the way because of stuff behind the door. Drying racks, towels, junk. The floor's a mess. Bins everywhere. Christmas wrapping paper. Empty bins that we're going to get filled Stuff with jewelry making. My uh, yarn stash is smaller after my no buy year. Shelves, I've got stuff everywhere. This dresser is actually full of my now summer clothes. But I may go through this dresser and just get rid of everything because those clothes don't fit me anymore. And I won't need that dresser for my off-season clothes anymore. So I might empty it and use it for yarn and bags and projects and who knows what else. So anyway, here is the before of my room. This is not something I'm proud of, as I'm sure you are not surprised to hear. But my plan is to move everything across 
the hall. I've blocked the down the steps downstairs so I can have the doors open up here. I'm going to move everything across the hall. And as I pick it up and decide, do I, is it garbage? Do I want to keep it and figure out where it's going to go? Or do I get rid of it? That's, that's the plan. Let me get a vacuum up here. After I picked up all the dinosaur snakes. Yarn, random yarn. <laughs> we call them dinosaur snakes because that's what Isabel called. When she was very small and very interested in dinosaurs, the yarn became dinosaur snakes and it used to attack us. Anyway, this is my room on January 1st, 2020. Let's see what we can do with this. Oh, there are bins and things all under there. I collected a bunch of stuff that I thought would come in handy when I wanted to start dyeing things. That's the stuff that I think will come in handy when I finish cleaning my fleece. I got jewelry stuff, jewelry making stuff I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. I have a sewing machine that is a serger that I bought years ago and I have no idea how to set up and use. I wonder where my other sewing machine is. It's here somewhere I'm sure. I'm sure I will come across it. Might be downstairs. <laughs> Funny, I have no idea. I think it must be downstairs. I use it downstairs. So anyway, Happy New Year. And when I walked in the door today to start the podcast, I took another video so that you can actually see what it looks like now. And truth be told, what the other guest room looks like because there's still stuff in there. So, and there's more stuff. <laughs> there's lots of stuff. So a lot of stuff has been moved out here into the guest room till I figure out how to deal with it. But here's a video that I took just a few minutes ago. Starting to gather my things for my podcast because I'm doing it in this room. But I just wanted to show you, this is the giveaway box. These are the empty bins I emptied yesterday. But this is my room. It's not finished, but it looks very different than it did a few days ago. So I'm pretty happy with it. I've enjoyed working on it. And I will be doing my podcast shortly. But I will show you what the other room looks like. Just full disclosure. So I have a bunch of stuff in here that I'll need to figure out what to do with, including my spinning wheel, which is gonna go back in my craft room, obviously. But, so that's that, crazy. So for the last few months, quite a few months, probably eight months, I have not been doing my podcast in this room because, well, you saw in the before video. That's why I haven't been doing it here. And um, and I guess I was ready. I have two projects that I'm working on that I want to work on. They're both gifts for people I love or care, and care about. And But both of those projects are in a place where I really have to use some brain power. And apparently, come New Year's Day, I was not ready to use my brain at all. And so instead of doing that, I started working on my room. And it has made me very happy. And I've worked on it four days in a row. And, you know, and I'm very, very happy with it. The I'm not a good sleeper. Last night was a terrible night. So I was laying in bed. My mind's going crazy. I'm thinking about every gajillion thing you can think of. The stupidest thing. I'm having arguments with people at work. I've been retired for six years. You know, I mean, all kinds of stupid stuff. My mind is just going crazy. Going back and forth between all kinds of things. And, um, but one thing, I was thinking about my room and how am I going to deal with it? Because I have... Can you see this big box here? This is one of those giant boot 
boxes. It is jam packed full to the top with knitting notions and supplies and gizmos and things that I have gotten over the years that I've been knitting. And um, I mean, a few of few things I've bought, bought have ended up in project bags and I use them, but there are a lot of things in there that I would use if I knew I had them or remembered I had them. And, um, and then there's no good way to do that. So I'm trying to figure out how I can organize that knitting stuff. But the thing that I realized last night was that my craft room is really a storage room. I don't knit in this room. And oh, I gotta go get a tissue. What is it about podcasting that makes your nose run? I don't know. Lorelai from Handmade from Lorelai. Her nose always runs when she podcasts. It's not just me. Anyway, I don't knit in this room. I don't um, cross stitch in this room, which are the two main sort of crafty things that I'm doing these days. But as you saw from the video, I have a nice big desk and um, lots of room to do stuff. Now, if I decide to go back and start making jewelry again, um, I will do that here. And if I start sewing again, I can sew in here and that'll, and that'll work very well. But meanwhile, this room is really a storage room. This is where, in theory, I would come when I wanted to start a project. I would pick my yarn, I would wind my yarn, find a project bag, and gather the bits and pieces that I needed. Do the project. While I was here, get the needles, and then I would go downstairs and sit in my chair and work on my project. So once I realize that that's the case, it means that I don't have to keep the top of this desk empty, but I do need to set it up in such a way that if I do decide to make some jewelry or so, it'll be easy enough to clear so that I can use the space. But if it's just a storage room, then the top of this is fair game for bins or um, some kind of system for organizing my um, crafts. So anyway, that's what I've been doing for the last few days is working on my room and it has made me very happy. It, it has not been a good thing for me to have this room so horrible, um, you know, where I'm telling even my knitting friends, do not open that door. You can't open that door. You know, like really and the cleaning people I get, get my house cleaned once a month they haven't been in here they're coming on Tuesday and I think I'm gonna tell them to come in here and vacuum um, and skip the other guest room which is the one that has all my stuff in it at the moment but my brother's coming to visit in a couple in a week and a half or two weeks and I'm hoping to use that as a little bit as a deadline to finish dealing with the stuff in the guest room and coming to a decision. But I'm, you know, I might go to the container store. I might go to Joanne's and see if I can figure out some system for organizing my knitting notions and such. But this has been a good way to start the new year for me. It's, I feel good about it. And, and so that's good. So the new year's podcast, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't do this on new year's day when I kind of thought I would, was because once again you got to do some work because you got, can't have your new year's podcast without at least discussing what you did last year <laughs> right <laughs> and since i have um since i was pretty lazy last year and i didn't do show notes and i didn't get any complaints from anybody who watches this podcast that there were no show notes i have to tell you but I also use the show notes to figure out, you know, to try to remember the name of the person who, you know, made the, designed the thing I'm doing or whatever, you know, I use, I use the show notes and with no show notes, it was really not that easy for me to figure out what I did. And I very possibly missed stuff because I'm also not doing project pages in Ravelry anymore. 
<sighs> I apparently don't want to do very much. But the lack of show notes is starting to bug me. So I, one of my podcast resolutions is to do show notes. And, um, and I will put them at the bottom of the YouTube, you know, on, on the video and also in Ravelry. Um, because it's easier for me to look for them in Ravelry, but not everybody's on Ravelry. And so if you find them useful, then they'll be there for you to see. I mean, it's not going to be extensive. It's just the names of the patterns and who they're by and the yarns and things like that. In theory, that's what I'm going to do. So my other podcast re resolution is to be a little more regular, um, is to be a little more regular with my podcasting. Here's my coffee. I did try, you know, I did a lot of traveling last year and that threw me off. And, um, anyway, I wasn't that as regular as I would like to be. So I'm going to try to be a little more regular with my podcasts. Um, and you know, the other thing is, is there anything that you would like me to talk about or, um, to see coming from me? in the coming year in the podcast. I'd be very curious to know. I'm not making any promises, but if there's something that you would like from me, like to see me do or like me to talk about or whatever, let me know. Put it in the comments below or on the show notes in Ravelry. Ha ha ha. Because there are going to be show notes. Um, so the things that are coming up in this podcast, I'm going to... Um, uh, talk about the fact that Leslie and I are continuing the stash from your cra craft from your stash make along. So we're going to continue that for another year, which is fun. And I have pulled the winners for the fourth quarter drawing and for the grand prize drawing for the 2019 winner of the craft from your stash knit along. So that's coming up. I will talk about what I to think I did last year and you know talk about the past year a little bit and I will also <clears throat> um, talk about sort of what my thoughts are coming up in the new year but I thought I would start with the knitting and the crocheting and such in case you don't care about my look in the past year, my discussion of what went on with me, and the year coming forward. So I'm going to do the knitting first, the um, FOs and whips. Then I'll do the winners of the knit along and discuss the knit alongs. And after that, I'll talk about. There may <laughs> there are very likely quite a few of you who are not interested in that other stuff. So. So I will start. My first FOs were the linen bath mitts that I made my daughter for Christmas, which I gave her at Christmas. But I was doing, did Vlogmas this year again, and I really enjoyed it. And thank you so much to everybody who was enthusiastic about that and left comments and was so kind. I really, really appreciate it. So I really enjoy doing Vlogmas, which is actually very strange to me and you know because it's you know it's a lot of work you got to put a video up every day that that turns out to be some work but also I'm very casual about my vlogmas so I try to just do little pieces and put them together I don't do a lot of editing so it doesn't take a long time some of them were long though I mean 30 minutes some of them some of them were shorter I'm a talker as you can see but I really enjoyed it and I did a little piece that I put in my Vlogmas about these mitts and I will put that here so you can see my first FO of the year with the mitts for Christy who made me this wonderful intro. So this is what I made her. I wanted to take a little bit of finished objects footage in Christy's mitts. Um, she asked for bath mitts again like I made her last year and I made two. I made the poppy colored one first. She had trouble keeping it on, so I thought if I had a thumb hole that would make it easier. But I was supposed to put a thumb hole on the other side too and I forgot. 
I just kept going. But after I made this, it felt too big. So I made a smaller one. And I think this is one is going to work. And I put thumb holes on both sides so she could use it either way. And I think this smaller size is going to work better. But she can, she'll get them both. This is made out of Shibui linen and some Habu stainless steel thread held together because she wanted the exfoliating sensation. And this is the one that Maisie decided to eat the needles out of, but in the end, it didn't damage the knitting at all. So these are going to go in with a few other tchotchkes for a little Christmas gift for her. And I'm pretty happy with how they have turned out. I'm sorry this one's so big, but she'll use it, I'm sure. But I think this one is the perfect size. So if I ever make her another one, remind me, 50 cast on stitches. This one was 60. Seems a whole lot bigger though, doesn't it? Maybe it was 65. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure this is 50 with a size one needle. So there you go. That's that's the recipe. <laughs> and I'm going to wrap presents now. She really loved them. I was really glad. She was very excited to get them. She has, um, she was very inspired by the cross stitch I was doing in July when she was visiting me last, but she... She was inspired, but not to do cross stitch, but she started doing embroidery and she's been doing embroidery ever since. And one of the things is that she started to collect the little tiny embroidery scissors that we use in cross stitch and knitting and uh, embroidery. And so I gave her a pair of those. I think that was the thing she was most excited about. <laughs> but she did like the mitts. She requested the mitts. She got one last year and she really liked it. So I was happy she liked it and I made her two more, so. My other finished object is my granny stripe blanket. And I do not know how to show you my granny stripe blanket. I did not, I weighed this. It weighs three pounds exactly according to my scale. I mean, I got on the scale holding it and then I got on the scale not holding it and it was exactly three pounds. It is a large, large granny stripe blanket. And on my last podcast, I asked the question, how do you know when you're done? And so I said I was going to do it up to the end of the year, and then I was going to stop. I didn't quite do what I said, which is not uncommon. But anyway, it's nice and giant. It's enough, big enough for two people to cuddle under it in the, oops, excuse me, as I come forward again. Big enough for two people to cuddle under it on the couch. And I love it. Absolutely love it. So I was working on it. And really kind of the first time Dennis paid any attention to it because it's getting big and we were talking about it and my my daughter was there and oops one more end beginning end to weave in that's the it I wove in the bottom end that's the top end my um daughter was here and we were talking about it and Dennis asked me if it was a king size blanket we have king size bed and I said no, it's not. And he said, oh, too bad. That would look great on the bed. Why don't you make a king size one? <laughs> so I was, as I was working on this, I thought, well, if I'm going to start a king size one, this one's done. I'm done. I'm going to stop this one. So I did. So I finished it on Christmas Eve, and I'm really, really happy with it. I couldn't be happier. It sits on my couch. Gosh, now I'm dry and coughing. I had a cold the whole time I did Vlogmas, but that cold is gone. But apparently I still have a dry throat. Maybe I should find some water in addition to my, my Cosmo and my coffee.
So something happened, and this wasn't that long ago, because this is the this is the cast off end. When I first started this blanket, my edge was very, 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 very wobbly. It just went in and out and in and out. I was a brand new crocheter. And I said, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm a brand new crocheter, you know. And I got about this far and I realized it was kind of bugging me and I could do better. So I undid the entire thing. And it turned out to be about 175 grams. And it was a magic ball by that point because these are all connected. And so I re-knit it and I have a nice long edge. Now I will confess to you, I am just seeing this right now. I had no idea. What the heck? So right here, instead of, instead of crocheting into this hole, I didn't. I didn't crochet into that hole. I went down here. I must have been talking and I just I'm just seeing that now I'm just seeing that now isn't that interesting oh well <laughs> huh very strange well anyway I missed a spot so my blanket is not perfect this is for the couch it will still keep me warm and I still love it. And these are all different scraps and things I made and get in and, and minis that were given to me. And some of them are from this year's, some of them are from this year's advent. As I was getting them, I was adding them to my blanket. And anyway, that has tons of great memories and I love it and I'm done. Which leads me into my whips because I'm still working on Sammy's sweater, which I didn't bring up here. I'm not working on it because I have to think about it. And that's one of the things I have to think about it. And apparently I didn't want to think about, so I haven't been working on it, but I have to work on it. I have to, because pretty soon it's going to be hot again in Florida and then she's going to outgrow it. I mean, at least she can grow into Isabel's and Isabel won't have a sweater, but then I'll, they'll have a sweater they can't use. But since Dennis requested a king size blanket, I made him one. Of course, it's not done yet. <laughs> I made him a I made him a scarf. So I got carried away and I made it probably too wide. Maybe not. This is four feet wide. Which I think means that it's going to have about 15 to 18 inches hanging over the sides on each side of the bed. So this will be like the quilt, the, the, the bedspread. This is not just a blanket. This is going to be, this is going to be the, the highlight of my new bedroom when we build our new house. And this is going to be it. So... I get, I got carried away and I went after I, you know, I was about here and I thought about tearing it out and rechaining something a little bit shorter, less wide because, you know, well, because it takes me an hour to do a stripe, which means I can calculate that this is going to be a 300 hour or more project. And it takes 14 grams of yarn to do one stripe. I just calculated that out yesterday. So it's a big project. So what I've done is I have designated a neutral colored yarn to be part of this. So I'm doing four rows of scraps and colors one, two, three, four. And then I'm doing two rows of a contrast or a neutral color, which is um, Knit Pick Stroll Bear. I had two, two skeins of that. I'm, this is my second skein that I'm in. So it took, it took a whole skein to do, I think, six rows plus the chain on and the single crochet at the, at the top at the beginning 
So I have just placed my first yarn buying order. The last time I bought yarn was in October of 2018. So I have a order into Knit Picks for 10 balls of Stroll Bear because I'm going to need it. I've, I've been, you know, crafting without, I don't have to think. And so I've been craft, I've been working on this blanket. As you can see, I started this Christmas Eve or the day after, I think me, I might've started Christmas day. I'm not sure. Very Christmas Eve, Christmas day, probably not Christmas day. I went to my parents or the day after Christmas, either Christmas Eve or the day after Christmas. So this is how many hours I've put in on this so far, which means you know, this is what I've been doing while I'm sitting and watching TV instead of knitting Sammy's sleeves. <laughs> and I have to stop doing that because i got to finish that sweater. But anyway, so far I am absolutely loving it. These colors, for the most part, are from my Advents this year. I had three Advent partners this year and I had the most amazing Advent. Thank you, ladies. And I'll show you some of my goodies at the end. So anyway, this is my only work in progress that can show you. I am working on something else, which I have to think about a little bit. But it's a gift for a friend, and I can't show it. But I will do a little video of it before I send it, and once I know it has been received, I will show it. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, this is my whip. So this is all the new knitting and crochet to discuss with you in this podcast. Now I have some old knitting. This is my, oh, I gotta look it up. This is my Not Too Much Sweater by Hinterstern. I'll put it down here. I'm not gonna put them all down here, tell you the truth. I don't think. Well, I could. I know most of them. Um, that this was the first sweater that I started and finished in 2019. I started it on January 1st and I finished it on the 8th. I knit it very quickly. And this is um, Chili Knits, two different colors of Chili Knits on the top and then it's Cloudborn yarn on the bottom. And I did a fadey thing. <clears throat> and I really like this, although the lesson I learned, the Cloudborn yarn is a much sturdier yarn. The soft um washable fingering is um a little soft and the rest of the sweater is a little heavy so it feels like it's being stretched out i think that if i were to do this again i would put the color stuff at the bottom even though that might um emphasize my hips you know, but I feel like at the top, it feels like it's not quite, it's definitely not as sturdy and solid as the rest of the sweater, but I like the sweater. It's comfortable. It was easy to knit. It has, I don't know if you can see it. It has a nice little detail down the back. If I were going to do it again, I put that detail. Oh, and it has it on the sleeves too, but because of the way the, the, Yarn is, it's very hard to see it. But if I do it again, I might do it in a yarn where that would show better and I would put the detail down the front too, because it's nice. So this was the first thing that I started and finished in 2019. I did finish my Portage cardigan, which I kind of counted as sweaters for this year, but I finished it on the 5th of January. I started it in July. I only had a little bit to go, so it doesn't really count, I don't think. So that means not counting the portage, which technically I finished in 2019. I knit four sweaters for myself. I knit this one, and I knit the vitamin D sweater. Um, I knit the Novelty sweater and I knit the Trove sweater, which was my sweater for um, Rhinebeck. I have pictures of most of those. I'm not sure I have a good picture of the Novelty. Isn't that interesting? I was so, that was my first Colorworks sweater. 
I didn't enjoy it. And I think it's not necessarily the sweater's fault or even the color work's fault, but I'll talk about that later. So I finished, started and finished four sweaters in 2019. I made a sweater for Isabel. I made a vest for my mother. I made socks for my father, but I did not knit any socks for myself. I knit, re-knit Dennis's hat. He had a hat I knit before and I took it out and re-knit it for him. And I made three shawls. I made the Exploration Station, the Night Shift shawl, and the Twinsy shawl. And I finished my Granny Stripe blanket. That was Christmas Eve. So I did a lot of knitting. I mean, I didn't do no knitting. I did a lot of knitting and um, and I finished a few things that I did cross stitch, which I didn't write down and don't necessarily have pictures of, but I did some cross stitching stuff, um, mostly Christmassy stuff that I really liked. So anyway, so it's back. Leslie and I are continuing the craft from your stash make along. We're using the hashtag stash mal 2020 since it's a make along. It's not a knit along because we're doing, you know, if you're weaving or spinning or crocheting or knitting, you know, it all counts. So so by popular demand, we ha are continuing that. I can intend to, to continue to knit from my stash. Um, I did did already order some yarn for my blanket, but I uh, my it's my intention in 2020 to be very very limited in how much yarn I buy. I obviously don't need yarn. I have a summer top that I'm going to run out of yarn for that I'm going to buy more yarn for. And you know, this, uh, I went to Rhinebeck and I didn't buy any yarn. So that's not happening this year. I'll tell you that for sure. I'm surely going to buy some yarn at Rhinebeck. I probably will go to Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. And if I do, I'll probably buy some yarn there. But other than that, I just don't, obviously I don't need yarn. I have tons of yarn. And I've got bins and I got way more than that. Although you can see my bins are, are um, I keep turning the wrong way. My bins are much less populated or, you know, my cubbies are much less populated than they were at the end of last year. I have been, all this sweaters and all these things are, have all been from my stash. I, I haven't purchased one inch of yarn in 15 months. And I really have enjoyed that. I've got to say, I really have enjoyed that. So anyway, we are continuing our year-long make-along. The rules are the same. It, you have to have owned the yarn at the end of 2019 and started the project in 2020. The only exceptions to that are whips that you are working on that would have qualified for the Stash Cal 2019 if you had finished them. So you can finish them and, and, and they'll qualify which means that you owned the yarn before by 2018 on those projects. But anyway, that's it. It's, it's you know, you got to use your stash to make something new. And um, I have an info thread and a chatter thread on Ravelry, just like last time. I will be picking a yarn prize from the info thread every quarter and a, and a um, pattern prize every quarter from the chatter thread. And Leslie is doing the same thing. So this is Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn Podcast. You all know about it. She's wonderful. And she, you know, she and I are doing this together. We did it together last year. And um, so we're happy to continue. We're both very interested in working from our stashes. And so we're glad to continue this. She also is starting another make-along that's being co-hosted by Kellyanne from Yarn Tales by the Sea. And that is a year-long sort of sea-themed knit-along. So if you have anything that's sea-themed, like a sea-themed color, or the colors look like the sea, or the pattern says something about the ocean, or octopuses, or fish, or waves, or whatever, 
go over to her channel and take a look at that. It sounds like that's going to be a fun make along. Um, if you are doing anything remotely sea themed. So anyway, I'm very happy to be doing the knit along again or the make along and, um, Without further ado, I will announce the winners of the fourth quarter prizes and the grand prize winner. And I have to confess, I have not picked the yarn for the fourth quarter prize yet. So I'm very sorry, Liz Kingston Cole, Liza Kingston Cole, L-I-Z-A-K-I-N-G-S-T-O-N-C-O-L-E on Ravelry, who is Liza from Dublin, Ireland. I cannot show you the yarn that you won because I didn't pick it yet. So now I'm going to go back and look at your, um, your description that you have on your, on your Ravelry page and see if you have a preference for color. So I might try to kind of make it match what you would like. Or... When you message me on Ravelry or it's Instagram, I'm D-E-E-V-A-A-S on both of those places. Let me know your favorite color. And, you know, I mean, I got what I got. It's coming out of my stash, but we'll see what I can do. So that would be fun. So Liza, Liza Kingston Cole from Dublin, Ireland. You're the fourth quarter yarn, yarn, winner from because you were number 281 in the fo thread now the fourth quarter pattern winner from the chatter thread was number 172 and that is philippa mc philippa from portugal so philippa message me on ravelry with the name of a pattern that you would like me to give to you anything up to ten dollars us and that on a giftable pattern and i will make sure that you get that pattern so message me on ravelry and we'll take care of that so those were the fourth quarter winners now i have to confess that i never heard from the third quarter winners and so i just rolled it into the fourth quarter so it is what it is now for the grand prize winner i did pick the grand prize the grand prize is Seven skeins, seven skeins of Malabrigo worsted, approximately 210 yards per skein. So this is a sweater's quantity of Malabrigo worsted in the Violetta's colorway. And I will be including some stitch markers with this. But this is the grand prize for the 2019 Craft From Your Stash Make Along. Da, 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 da. And the winner is Piper's Mom, Sandy. Piper's Mom from Albany, New York. And luckily for me, purple is on her list of her favorite colors. So I think she might enjoy this yarn. I hope so. Anyway. This is the grand prize. I will be sending it to Albany, New York. So Piper's mom, Sandy, please message me on Ravelry with your mailing address. And um, Liza from Dublin, I need your mailing address too to send your, your yarn, which I have yet to pick out. It's up there somewhere. If you see anything you like, let me know. And I will be sending those out. So congratulations to Liza, Philippa, and Sandy. And thank you to everyone, everyone for participating in the make along. It's been so inspiring. I've gotten so many ideas and I'm looking forward to the coming year of all of us crafting from our stash because I obviously have a lot of stash. I got two bins in the other room of sweater quantities of yarn and that's the plan to craft from my stash for the most part. So there you go. If you don't want to hear about my ramblings about my life, that's it. And I will see you next time and happy new year and happy crafting. So, oh, 
but I do have some things that are needle adjacent if you didn't go yet. I am going to be making this Patapsco. This was a gift from the lovely Linda, maybe, who sends, sent me this pattern, which I really love. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I've been wanting to do some cables, and this is beautiful. And I had this, ca this uh, camel yarn, and I think I talked about this on my last project. Project podcast but because it's because it's uh vlogmas it's hard for me to remember so this is jones and vandermeer 100 percent curious yarns and this is clever camel 100 percent camel oops upside down clever camel it's 100 percent camel baby camel and it's in the colorway Light Naked. So I guess you'd call it camel color. It's a very lovely yarn. And I had started a project with this and realized I didn't care about it. So I decided to use this yarn for that shawl. And I'm in the middle, still in the middle of doing my gauge swatch. But um, I think it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to show the cables really well. And it's going to be warm and yummy. So my problem is, it says approximately 550 yards to 610 yards on this. I have exactly 550 yards. And she put that, she put those measurements in based on um, how much yardage her, her um, test knitters used. And that's why I'm doing a gauge swatch. I don't normally do a gauge swatch for a shawl. But I'm afraid I won't have enough yarn. And that's not my brand. That's Leslie's brand. <laughs> so I'm afraid I won't have enough yarn. Although, I wonder if I could... It never occurred to me that I could buy more of it. I could buy another skein and then I wouldn't have to worry. Maybe I'll do that now that I'm allowed to buy yarn. That's the kind of yarn buying that I'm going to want to do. So maybe I'll do that and I'll just, I'll just, well, let me check and see if I can still get it. Cause this yarn I got from yarn box Lux back in the day and they're long gone. So who knows this company may be out of business too. I never heard of them except for this. So I will look that up before I make a decision, but otherwise I might just swatch to figure out what I want my fabric to be rather than worrying about gauge if I can get another skein of this yarn I might do that I might do that that would be good all right so this is yarn adjacent the other thing that is yarn or uh, you know needle adjacent is and this is getting a little bit into my goodies because this was from Susan who was I did an advent with. Susan is a lovely woman and she has been so encouraging and all the shenanigans Dennis and I have gotten into going to Egypt. We went to Egypt twice in the last few years. And anyway, so she gave me this as part of my advent for my um, Christmas day. And in theory, it's Veni Vidi Vici, which means I came, I saw, saw, I conquered, which is supposedly what Julius Caesar said back in the day. And this is a pattern by Megan Chir, who lived in Egypt for a year or something. She had a knit party podcast, something like that. I haven't seen it lately. I don't know if she's still doing it, but she's back in the United States. But anyway, obviously she was in Egypt. I have pictures of me in this very spot. Um... But my daughter is a medievalist. I'm very proud of her. She's a doctor medievalist and knows Latin and knows ancient Latin. And she tells me this is actually pronounced Weni Weedy Weedy. <laughs> it sounds wimpy like that, doesn't it? I think I'm just going to mispronounce it like everybody else. Veni Weedy Weedy. Anyway. So I am going to be knitting this. This is a one skein project, which is so nice because I want, I have, you know, a lot of 
sweaters that I want to just have a little accent with. And anyway, so she gave me this yarn, which is called Egyptian Gold. But these colors are perfect because I have two yellow summer sweaters that I would love to put, have a little accent shawl, just a little something, not too much, not too warm because they're summer. So anyway, I am going to take her entire Egyptian advice on this and make this shawl out of this color. So these are from, these were my Christmas Day Advent present from Susan. So thank you so much, Susan. This is also needle adjacent, but you can tell I haven't even wound the yarn yet. So those are needle adjacent and I'm going to finish some of the socks I've started because I did not make myself any socks this year, which is very disturbing to me because I wear my socks every day in the winter and I don't wear other socks. I wear them to the gym. I wear, I, I have not put on socks by anybody else in, this is the third winter. But I do have several pairs of socks, which now that I've cleaned my room, I'm not sure where they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what I did with those that need to be um, mended because I've gotten holes in them. So my socks are not going to last forever. I need to keep up a steady supply. So I do want to do that. So those are my needle adjacent things. And I have some more thinking about knitting the, this coming year in the next part of my talk, which is looking back on the year in the past and looking forward to the year. So there's a tiny little bit of knitting, not, not enough to worry yourself if you care, if you don't want to watch the rest of this stuff. But I had two major themes for 2019 sort of around my, that took a lot of my mental energy and, you know, were kind of the focus of my year. I'm retired, you know, so it's easy for me to not worry about stuff and you know when I get two things on my calendar in a week it feels like I'm like <sighs> which is kind of crazy because I used to commute an hour and 20 minutes each way to work <laughs> so when I think of myself retired and getting so like oh no my, my calendar's too full I got to take a day off it's pretty hilarious actually <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the first kind of sad-ish, sad theme of um, 2019 was that my knitting mojo was pretty low for almost the whole year. And I think, I mean, I really do attribute it to the events early in the year all around the, the discussion of diversity in the knitting community. That really threw me for a loop and it and and was very disturbing to me and I felt like it really added this level of turmoil and I'm not sure what to my knitting which kind and I think it ultimately led to me having um, a much lower knitting mojo than I had previously. Now this also corresponded pretty directly with me having been knitting for over, for six years, five and a half years. I was coming up on my sixth anniversary of knitting in February last year. This will be seven years I'm knitting come February. So I haven't been knitting for a very, very long time. But I do know things about myself and one of the things I know about myself is I'm a serial enthusiast and so I was a very avid poker player I studied I played lots of poker I played online when we were allowed to play online I went to Atlantic City I played a lot of poker and I studied poker and I you know took courses on poker and I was a very avid poker player for about five years and right at the time where Americans were not allowed to play online anymore and things got really bad, right around that time I had become interested in doing lamp working, which is the um, art of making beads on a torch. And in my new intro, there's a little bit of me on my torch and that's why this is called the Flame and Fiber Podcast. 
And so I wasn't sad that I couldn't play poker quite so much because at, at that point, poker was literally my second job. I actually, I actually um, filed my taxes as a professional poker player as my second job. So I was making money and I was, um, so it was like a job. So when I st started making beads and doing beads, I felt like, wait a minute, I should be working, which is, of course is ridiculous. So I wasn't sorry that I couldn't play poker anymore and I started doing lamp working. And, um, and I was an avid lamp worker. I was lamp working like crazy. In the course of cleaning out this room, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beads that I have made over the years. And one of the problems with making lamp work beads is that, you know, the only thing to do with lamp work beads is make jewelry. <laughs> So I started making jewelry, which I also enjoyed. And I sold a lot of jewelry to people at work. And I had some couple shows. And it was, you know, and I enjoyed it. But the point was, I have all these beads. What am I going to do with them? And towards the end of my fifth year, there's a theme here, my fifth year of lamp working, I retired. And... I started selling my beads on some lamp work bead auction sites on uh, Facebook pages. And you put, a, you, you know, your beads were, you put a picture of your bead and people would bid for them in the comments. And, you know, then, you know, you would leave it up for 24 hours and then whoever had the highest bid at the end of the 24 hours had bought your bead and then you contacted them and well, it turns out that's a lot of work because not only you have to make the beads, you have to take pictures of the beads, you got to put them up on Facebook, you got to write a description, you have to go every once in a while and bump it so people, excuse me, see your bead. And I was doing this, my my husband and my father-in-law had built me a beautiful, beautiful studio, which I've shown you on my, on some of my lamp working videos. And so I was working in this gorgeous studio and I was making beads. And then I started making beads that I thought would sell instead of making beads that made me happy, that, you know, that I advanced my skills that were challenging. You know, I was making production beads. And I was selling them in this way that was a huge amount of work. And I did that for about five months, five or six months. I mean, it was paying for my hobby, which was nice. Dennis teased me because I was working harder selling those beads than I had been when I was commuting an hour and a half, 20 minutes each way and working as a manager for a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the money. <laughs> It burned me out. And right around that time, when I was burning out from the lamp working, I started knitting. And so I stopped lamp working and started knitting, and then I've been knitting, and I've been knitting ever since. So my worry during this past year is that it's been five years. Maybe this is a theme for me, and maybe... It's not just I've lost my mojo, but maybe I'm moving on. But I don't feel like I'm moving on. I mean, I don't have anything else that I would rather do. It just feels a little burned out rather than moving to the next thing that I'm excited about. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the cross stitch. I'm really enjoying it. But it's not the next thing to take the place of knitting because knitting is, you know, it's not taking the place of knitting. So I think that I'm not moving on, which is why I'm still doing podcasts and still working on my stuff, because I think if I were moving on, then I would be, you know, I've always moved to something. I've always, been, you know, started the next thing and then wanted to do that and given up the other thing. That hasn't, that isn't what's happened with me. I think I've just... I got so discombobulated and all kinds of emotions and things were going on in my head that got conflated with knitting and it really depressed my mojo. So 
I one of the things that I'm going to work on this year is to figure out how to get my mojo back. It doesn't help that I have this stupid sleeves I've got to do for Sammy's sweater and it's just blocking me. So I'm just going to sit down and do them. I'm just going to sit down and do them. And the next week I'm going to sit down and figure out my gift thing that I have to do. And I'm going to figure out the sleeves for Sammy's sweater and I'm just going to do them. I'm just going to do them. And I'll post them on Instagram. Well, the sleeves, I'm not going to post the present. I'll post on Instagram so you can see that I've done it. And someone had asked me to um, show them how I put the zipper in. I was so unhappy with how I put Isabel's zipper in. I'm going to put the girl's zippers in. And I'm going to see if I can record a video of me doing that. Now, I'm no expert. These are the first zippers I've done. I'm just going to show you what I did if you care. Um, but I'm going to do a better job. And I'm going to get those sweaters to Florida while it's still a chance it's going to be chilly. And that they'll still fit the girls. So that's my plan. So I want to get past that and then um, work on getting my mojo back. Because I really love knitting. I have a lot of things to knit. I have a lot of things I love. A lot of patterns I love. I got things to knit. So I want to do a penguano. I'm going to knit a penguano this year. Yeah, I am. Um, I don't know what else. But I'll talk about the next thing that was a big part of this past year is I started working on my health. Um, when my daughter was here in July, I was eating a lot of carbs. We, Dennis and I have been moderately low carb for a few years, but we haven't been very, very strict. And, and when my daughter was here, I was eating carbs. And my knees were aching me. I felt like an old lady. And I know, you know, I know the drill here because it's happened to me before. I have arthritis in my knees. And when I eat carbs, they get inflamed and they hurt. So I was like, you know, standing up and then you have to stand there for 15 seconds till your knees stop hurting before you can walk. That's where I was. So I decided to buckle down and, you know, we had been just low carb and people had been talking about the keto diet and I didn't know the difference between a low carb diet and a keto diet. And in the end, it really, for me, was no different because what they can, you know, but what I considered a low carb was extremely low carb, which is what a keto diet is. I mean, they, you, you know, 20 grams of net carbs a day is all you get. And you can get to 20, I mean, that's, that's less than a slice of bread. You get them from your green vegetables. That's how you get those carbs in your diet as keto. So anyway, I started doing a lot of research about um, the keto diet. And I went on it. And very shortly thereafter, my knees stopped hurting. <laughs> and the more research I did, the more I realized that there are huge benef health benefits to getting rid of carbs. Turns out carbs are extremely inflammatory. And that so many chronic diseases are caused by inflammation. I mean, you can, you know, you can Google that and look it up. They'll tell you, you know, uh, diabetes, um, dementia, high blood pressure, arthritis, you name it, you name it. It's caused by inflammation. Diabetes is caused by directly by eating carbs but other than that it's inflammation and you know that's the number one cause of almost every disease people have these days and so on and so eating a keto diet is an anti-inflammatory diet which helped my knees and since my mother has dementia I'm very interested in preventing that in myself because I don't want Dennis to have to go through what my dad's going through, frankly. So anyway, the gorgeous side effect of all these healthy things about eating no carbs is that I've also lost 45 pounds since the middle of July. And that's been very fun, I have to say. I needed new pajamas. Um, and the last time I bought pajamas, I bought a size 1X. And this time I bought pajamas. I bought a medium. I bought a medium. I couldn't believe it. I'm so excited. So I still have 30 pounds to go. And so 
but I expect to be finished. I expect to be at my goal weight sometime around May. And so the other thing I've been doing is I've been Googling things like capsule wardrobe and trying to figure out because come May, I will be giving away every single piece of clothing I have except the sweaters that I've knit. I, and the two pairs of pants that I bought at Goodwill. <laughs> I won't have anything in my house that fits me except my new pajamas and a couple pairs of underwear I just recently bought and you know and I'm not giving away my sweaters They're, the the ones I can't wear will go into as stash and um, so anyway so that's been fun I you know I mean just the thought of starting completely fresh like, what would you buy? And I'm retired, so I don't need very many clothes. And anyway, I've been having a lot of fun thinking about that. And also, I'm going to... So one of the things... One of my goals in 2020 is I'm going to continue working on this health thing. I'm going to keep doing the keto lifestyle. And I expect to get to my goal weight. And so when I think about my knitting goals, I want to be a little more thoughtful about the sweaters that I knit in 2020 so that they will go into my new capsule wardrobe. The problem is I don't know what that my capsule wardrobe looks like. <laughs> so maybe I should just knit the sweaters that I want to knit out of the yarn I want to knit them and then make my wardrobe go with them. There you go. Maybe that's the plan. Because, you know, I mean, most capsule wardrobes, everything is, you know, gray and black and white and beige. Which actually would work because then my sweaters have all the color and they're the one, that's, they're going to be the most important part of the wardrobe, of course, as as is appropriate. Um, so since I'm going to, also, Dennis and I are going skiing in February. I haven't been skiing in 15 years or more, more than 15 years probably. And we skied a lot when we first got married. I was a Weight Watchers leader when we first got married. I was at my goal weight and we were doing a lot of skiing. Dennis was a skier at that time. Since then, we both gained a lot of weight. Dennis has lost 45 pounds too. He's only got 20 more to go. I've got 30 more to go. Um, I'm hoping that I get small enough by February that I can wear my ski outfit <laughs> again. <laughs> but we're going skiing. So the other thing we've done this year is we've started going to the gym. So we got a membership at Planet Fitness, $10 a month. And we've been going pretty religiously. We had a couple weeks there around Christmas where we were not quite so religious. But we're doing strength training and we're trying to get stronger and be more healthy in our old age. And so that's why that and losing the weight, but also the strength training is why I'm considering trying to ski again. So I'm very excited about that. So that's what we're doing in 2020. And I'm going to continue crafting from my stash because I have a gorgeous stash. I have yarns that I love. I really have enjoyed crafting from my stash in the 2019 and I'm going to continue to do that. Um, I'm going to, but I'm going to be more thoughtful about the garments that I make to make sure that they will be flattering to my new figure and to kind of a reasonable wardrobe that I'm hoping to put together. Um, and I'm going to be very thoughtful about any yarn that I buy. Like I said, I may try to see if there's more of that clever camel so that I don't have to worry so much about that because I hate playing yarn chicken. And I'm playing yarn chicken with a with a summer top that I was making last year and I just put it away because it was a summer top of going into fall and I didn't have enough yarn. So I might do that, although I'm going to try that on before I do much more because it might not fit me. I might have to take it all apart and maybe I have enough yarn for a smaller me. You never know. The other thing is I'm going to knit more socks. I need socks. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to work on getting my mojo back. 
And my cross stitch goal is I, I have that Christmas book and I'm going to make the 12 days of Christmas. That's, you know, so I'm going to do that. I haven't hardly had my Cosmo. It's going to be all watery in my, I brought, I'm like, I brought my, my shaker, but it's going to be all watery. Oh, I can hear. I still have ice cubes. Hey, Chevy Rell. Anyway. So I got a couple, I got some really lovely things from my advent. I showed you from Susan. She gave me this for my, for my, um, for my Christmas day. Wait a minute. Where's my, oh, this happens to me all the time. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, the other thing I have to do for the girls is I made, this was one of the first things I made Isabel. She had this when she was born. And I'm going to fix it and send it along. It's got, I don't know if I already fixed that or it was just, I mean, this was one of the first things I knit when I was a brand new knitter. I, I started knitting three days before I found out I was going to be a grandmother. So this was one of the first things. Isn't that the cutest thing? I, I don't know what this is. I'll see if I can find it. But he needs a he needs a fix, and I've had it for a long time. She doesn't even remember I have it, so I'm gonna fix it and put that back when I send the sweaters. So anyway, also from Susan, she gave me this beautiful necklace. Beautiful necklace. This necklace is a cable needle. Isn't this not the greatest thing? So I can wear my necklace. <laughs> and then when I get to the cables on my shawl, right there, right there. Crazy, right? Such a cute idea. She also gave me this. I felt so bad. I'm such a jerk. Gave me this great market bag full of dogs. She's she's a good friend. She she sent toys to the dogs. I didn't bring those up because they're. She, so she gave me this. Maisie loved it. Maisie took it out in the yard the same day I got it. It was completely covered in mud. Luckily, it washed up great. It washed up so nicely. But this will all forever be Maisie's bag. I'm <laughs> I'm ready to like I don't even know. She's getting better, and I'm getting better. I mean, I, it's more I'm getting better than she's getting better, to tell you the truth. But anyway, so she gave me this great bag and gorgeous yarns and wonderful, wonderful things. So thank you, Susan. I also did an exchange with Megan and this is the fourth year I've done an exchange with Megan my third advent advent with her and we've already planning to do it again next year and so she gave me one thing she gives me every year is a New Zealand she's in New Zealand a New Zealand calendar which is going up right there I just took down the old one when I was cleaning up the office I love that big print. Thanks. That is a Takahi. Now I gotta look that up because it's not giving me a lot of information. Oh, and the school term ends on Friday, July 3rd. So, <laughs> oh, depending on where you live. Anyway, so this is going up. She gives me the, she also gave me Give me a cross stitch pattern of New Zealand. Isn't that cute? <laughs> a Aotearoa. Roa. I'm sorry. Someone helped me say that, and then I've forgotten it. That's the Maori word for New Zealand. And uh, so this is a cross stitch pattern that she gave a whole kit that she gave me. She also gave me gave me a market bag. Isn't that cute? And it's, uh, 
She always gives me stuff that's very New Zealandy. I'm going to have to go find her a bunch of American stuff, although it seems to me that she probably has access to almost American. But it's also a market bag with kiwis. Isn't that fun? And, uh, and a nice metal water bottle. So, and gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. This is the Christmas yarn that she sent me. Isn't that beautiful? It's from Nana Cindy NZ. And it's hand dyed yarn and fiber in the color Splish Splash, 100% lush superwash merino, DK weight. So, is that gorgeous or what? I do not have a lot of DK weight stuff, so this must maybe should just end up being a hat. Isn't that lovely? I wear my hats every day in the winter, so why not? And I could wear them at the, in the house because sometimes I'm cold. But isn't that beautiful? Splish splash. Ooh, ooh. This would qualify for Leslie's other make-along. Splish splash. Ocean water. The sea. For sure. For sure. That'll be fun. So anyway, that's from Megan. And last but certainly not least... I did an exchange with, uh, Advent exchange with Sandy, <laughs> and this was just the gift with no date. Isn't that beautiful? And look at this bag, and it's got this great clear pocket in the front, and this is a lovely, um, flat, flat feet creations. And it's a um, superwash nylon, and isn't that pretty? It's purpley and gray, and anyway, so that was even not even a day. That was just in it for me. And she also gave me cable needles, which I love, and they're so pretty. Can you see those? Those are knit picks. And so for her Christmas gift was another bag. Isn't this fun? And oh, with a Santa. I put that Santa on there. She gave me, she also gave me one of these. And so many of the days had a beautiful progress keeper or stitch marker. Aren't they beautiful? So nice. I also got a needle minder. Christmassy needle minder, this beautiful bag, and cozy knitter yarns, which I'm going to make this year because I need more socks. So I'm so excited to have this. They're so beautiful, and I love the colors. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you so much for the Advents Lady. It was so much fun for me. Well, you guys all saw if you watched my my vlogmas how much I loved it. And so many beautiful yarns that are going into my blankets. It was unbelievable. So anyway, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. I say cheers to 2020. I have an idea. It's going to be a wonderful year, I'm hoping. Here's to shopping in our stashes. Getting our mojo back. If you're if you're in the same boat as me, I know there are people who are. It's I'm not alone in this. And just moving forward in a kind and lovely way. I hope that we can all do that. So I don't know what else I wanted to say. I'm gonna guess nothing because I had a lot of pages here. I was writing, writing, writing. So the winners of the prizes contact me. I need physical addresses for from Eliza and Sandy and Philippa. I need you to tell me what pattern you want. So I hope you guys have so much time to do all the crafting that brings you joy. And I so look forward to spending this upcoming year with you. So I will say Happy New Year. Bye, everybody.